Welcome, Supers, back to another Shark Tank Tank Tales interview. I am so happy to be bringing you another entrepreneur that has been in the tank and survived being in the tank. Today, I need you to give some super claps. Wherever you are right now, whatever you're doing, just start clapping for super. And I should have asked you how you pronounce your last name after <laughs> before we did this. Super okay. Diana Jara? Jarar. Jarar. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Like Rar, like the uh, Winrar, if you've ever heard anybody make that reference. I didn't, but I know the lion roar. Yes. No, <laughs> Win Winrar, it, it's a, like a, you know, like a zip file. Oh, oh okay. It's a, like a it's raw a company file? That, yeah, raw, a raw file. Yeah, Winrar. I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> No, All right. never made a reference before, so there's a first. <laughs> just, just, just me. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, Diana, how, how are you doing today? I'm good. Just uh, we're ten days post Shark Tank now, and so just been super busy with um, a spike in orders that we've been getting, which was really awesome. And we have a bit of a heat wave here in LA, which is day one of that heat wave. So I have to kind of prepare on that and plan accordingly. Um, really. I was not aware yes. of the heat wave. I have not had time to follow the news much lately. <laughs> Where are you at? I am outside of Philadelphia in Jersey. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're having very different experiences right now. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, we're getting lots and lots of rain. And, well, California has not had a whole lots and lots of rain. In a yes, long, long but we time. have 90 and 95 degree weather this week, which is even strange for us. Wow. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Not, a, not ideal. Not ideal. Yeah. Global warming is, is a real thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's I mean it's definitely uh taking taking its toll uh day in and day out. So all right, so your so what was your relationship with Shark Tank prior to getting to go on Shark Tank? Definitely what you know, was a fan. I wouldn't say I was a super fan. It's not like I caught every episode or every season. It was just more um, whenever it was on and I would catch it, and especially not having cable anymore. It wasn't like I would just put it on and it would be there. Uh, but since they started streaming it on Hulu, that's been really awesome because uh, I can just kind of go and catch the episodes that I want to look for. Also, over the last several years, I've had a lot of like colleagues and like friends in the business that have been on the show, and so I'll go and look for their episodes specifically. Um, of course, like did my research on the Sharks even before, before getting on the show because I was just curious about their backgrounds and what they're into and um, you just get kind of curious about the entrepreneurial side of things even before becoming an entrepreneur. That's why the show is so popular, right? Um, but yes, I was definitely watching it. I have a cousin who is obsessed. <laughs> I think he's seen every <laughs> single episode. And so once he found out I was going on, he lost his mind, I think, even <laughs> more than I did. <laughs> well, oh, so did they, uh, did they reach out to you or did you decide to apply? I applied and it was actually my fourth time applying. Wow. Like I, like I pretty much applied every year of our business. Um, but the first year I didn't take it for like they, they screen, you know, there's the, there's a whole process. So there's a screening process and I didn't even get to the point where I submitted what they needed me to submit the very first year. I just kind of let it go in a way. Mm -hmm. And then the following three years, including the one that I ultimately made it for, I went through, you know, the process and just kind of tried to get as far as I can. Um, and then, and then like the last, this last time when I was there, when I was actually in the studio, one of the producers was like, Oh yeah, I saw your name coming up four times. I'm so glad that you finally made it. So it was just so funny to put like a face <laughs> to someone's name because I've received emails from them. So it was, um, it was kind of a cool moment. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome. I, you know, they, it, it, they are, I mean, from what I've heard from other people, they are uh, some of the best people in the business, uh, very much down to earth and very, um, I, I guess, aware of their their place in helping real people. You know, it, it is, you know, a form of reality TV, but they very much um, understand that these are real people, real businesses and real experiences that they're bringing to light. Right. And not just like glorifying it or I mean, obviously, they're editing it down from, you know, an hour plus, uh, sometimes less than an hour. But it's it's so it's so great to hear uh, the great stories that come that come from that, you know, that come from from working, getting to work with great people. 
Yeah, I mean, I was honestly pleasantly surprised by by that. Like, there was so much like warmth and like sincerity and authenticity throughout the whole process. It didn't feel like this dry, um, transactional process. They genuinely are there to like guide you throughout the whole process. And you know, I built great connections with my like my producers, and that was really pleasant because it can be an intimidating experience, especially for like a true grassroots business who. I've never done anything like that before. I mean, you're going to national TV. And so to have that kind of guidance, they are very aware of, of, of that, of like how intimidating it can be for us. And so they just really make it as comfortable as possible. Yeah, no, that, that, that's awesome. So uh, four times applying. Now, uh, I, unfortunately, I've been like ridiculously busy lately. I didn't get to rewatch your pitch prior to uh, the interview, unfortunately, but uh, you did say that you uh, are friends with Coconut. Uh, it was a Coconut Girl? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we were like kind of more like through the space, I, I would say, if, you know, friends might be. I don't want to over represent <laughs> what our relationship was. It's an acquaintanceship. I, I knew her and, and I wanted to help them with this like vegan recipe they were working on like five years ago. And ultimately, we didn't go down the path of working together, but I got to visit her kitchen and I love her product and got to meet her and it was such a really such a new world for me because i i have an entrepreneur you know entrepreneurs in my family but it's more like small businesses like my dad owned an air um a travel agency back in damascus where i grew up and so i got to see that hustle but it's not the same when you have this like cpg product that you're trying to la launch nationally and potentially internationally and you have like a physical product that you have a whole supply chain and like logistical process with um, and so just getting to see what she was up to also being a female entrepreneur in LA was just very uh, familiar and I got really interested especially being someone who you know loves food that's that's one of my four days I would say for the last 18 years in LA I've just been cooking up storms and I wanted to be in the food space somehow but being a chef was just not for me and this was like the happy medium you know very challenging happy medium but still the happy medium for me. Oh, that that is awesome though. I you know it's it's funny how things like that come around, you know come full circle uh, as far as like you know you you helping somebody then then them them ending up on Shark Tank and then you know you ending up on Shark Tank not what two seasons later, um, yeah. which is just it's just awesome to see, like it's a, like an inception kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I know it's really it's 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 pretty cool, especially like now looking in hindsight when you're envisioning something and then it's come together and saying that I now did that thing that I've been envisioning and saying that I'm going to do. It's weird for it to be past tense. <laughs> I bet. I bet. So uh, when you finally found out that you were going to potentially make it through uh, to, you know, after uh, four times applying, uh, did you, how did you start to craft your, your pitch and what, um, how did you go about balancing that with the rest of your life and your business and everything else that you had going on? Cause obviously it's a huge time sink for something that, I mean, up until, I mean, heck, even up until, you know, two weeks before it potentially, you know, airs, you don't know that it's ever maybe going to air. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it's definitely a, a, a large investment of time because you have to focus your like yourself it's not just about finding time it's making sure that you're do you're giving that time your best so whether it's crafting the pitch or designing your set or whatever it is that you're doing wardrobe i mean every element you're involved in as an, as the entrepreneur um and but they guide you they guide you throughout the whole process and there are you know times crafted out when you you know chat with the producers and figure things out and so you have to just write it out you know you just kind of like write things out they figure out what times work for you for connecting and i think the biggest it's not really a time consumer. It's just that it's something that's on your mind. So even if you're not immediately working on it, because it's not like it's you know a full-time job where you're working on it every day. It's just periodically on a semi-weekly or bi-weekly basis. There's something happening that you need to prepare. So you find the time for it. But it's just in the on the back burner, in the back of your mind. You know, you know it's there. You're anticipating. You're waiting to hear back. So it's just really more of that like m mental space um, that it takes up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 
Uh, and then you know, it's it always kind of like a, a, like I don't know a lottery ticket too. You know that that thought yeah. like, well, th this could be super game changing, or it literally could fall apart before it ever I ever get there, or it never even you know ends up airing or anything like that. But yeah. um, that is that 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 it is a it is a I don't want to say burden, but it is a obligation for sure. Um, to, to put yeah. yourself through that, especially like, cause you're not, you're not, you're living in a vacuum, right? You're not just, okay, we're going on the show. And, um, I kind of like, uh, if you were say only like a game show, like, uh, like mm -hmm. a survivor or amazing race or something, you know, something to that effect where it's like, once you're on it, you're, you're in it. Right. And you're, you're, you're ex the experience in theory is longer than like 45 minutes to an hour or hour and a half or whatever it is. So, um, it's a, you know, it's very, very much different, uh, experience wise. But so yeah. when you, uh, when, when you finally got to go and record, right. When you finally got to, to go, well, you're already in LA. So <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah. the, here, here's a, here's a, behind, I don't know if this is too, too forward, but because you're in LA, do they send a car for you or do you just have to drive over to the studio? Oh, I took, I took my car. You just, you, you drive over. Oh, okay. I mean, well, I, I mean, it, yeah. It, yeah. But there is no there's I mean, there's like a logistical process that they that they follow, whether you're in L.A. or not, just to keep things very streamlined. Uh, um, OK. Yeah. But but it is, you know, there's a, you know, just next like the, to the studio, oh, so you, a hotel. You still that, have to go to the hotel like that. Part, yeah. So I still, got picked oh, up, okay. I still got picked up from the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I drove oh, okay. there. I, I didn't fly in um, and I didn't stay at the hotel. I guess in theory I could have, but it took me 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> to drive to the hotel <laughs> so that was awesome i just left super early because my call time was early and just hit the road and actually took a little nap in my car i even had time to <laughs> nap before they picked me up <laughs> uh, that's awesome that's awesome yeah. so uh so when you when you get when you got there were you uh recording early in the, in the earlier in the day or later in the day earlier in the day yeah L earlier luckily it was just less anticipation i just wanted to just get it out of there and be done and i had been prepping obviously for weeks at that point. And like you said, just things, you know, change. And it's not like I knew right away that I was going to be filming or not. So when I knew I was filming, I just wanted to go in and get it done and not have it be like the last um, shoot of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's understandable. I, you know, I would uh, probably feel the same way wanting to uh, get it, get it like a bandaid, you know, right off, right at the beginning um, as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah, just just jump in. No more uh, procrastination. <laughs> so walking down the hallway, how are you feeling about your pitch? How are you feeling about uh, the business? How are you feeling about uh, like the experience, all that? So I was really prepared. I just made sure. I always love using the analogy of Eminem in that movie Eight Mile and that song. What was that song called? Um, uh, Lose, Lose yourself. yourself. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's my, it's my, it's my hype song. It's amazing. <laughs> and I always make that analogy where you're kind of anticipating what they're going to uh, bring up in terms of pushback points and whatnot. So I'm very aware of what my business is, where I'm at, where my business is at. And so I went into it, and I had there were no surprises in terms of what the pushback was. Um, except for the packaging stuff, which we can get to, because I couldn't have anticipated that. That's very subjective. But just like the more objective um, elements, like the revenues and where we were in the market. So I was very prepared to talk about my business, talk about my story. Nobody knows it better than like us, the entrepreneur, right? But you still want to practice because there are certain things like the point of differentiator. I, you know, I can express my point of differentiator. At the end of the day, someone either sees it or doesn't. And I just know being having a pulse on the market where we're at with that but somebody who's a little bit more removed from that may not immediately see that um so i was long story short is that i was very prepared going into the tank there's still the nerves just again because of the the situation and the and the experience um but walking down that runway i was i wouldn't say i'm calm but i definitely was not like anxious or nervous i was very present i don't think i've ever been that present in my life and it was just knowing that I've already prepared for this. I've, I've practiced and we don't have the questions. We have no idea what they're going to bring up. But like I said, again, I'm just bringing up all the points ahead of time and thinking what I might say in response to those points. So I was ready. And once I was there, I was just 
like so focused on on them on my presentation and just like doing the absolute best that i can i had really like no anxiety in, in that moment wow well i mean being prepared uh definitely helps right <laughs> knowing knowing your numbers knowing what your uh, potential thought pro you know what your i mean obviously you have watched the show so you knew you know some of the potential questions that could come up uh, and and all that and uh, you know when you're when you're prepared it enables you to be um, I would say to a point where it's like I know I'm it's almost like automatic what what's going to come out of my mouth as long as mm -hmm. they're asking the right question that they don't like they start with like ooh I recognize that question and take like a hard left and you're like answering the wrong question. You got the right yeah. answer, just the wrong questions being asked for that answer, um, and and all that. But yeah, I so the pa let's 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 talk. Let's dive into the packaging because I, uh, I when I was I remember when I was watching it, thinking uh, was because the way it was presented in the edit, it sounded like the white packaging was the new packaging, at least in the very beginning. Okay. I don't know if it was just me being confused because, like, hey, that's that's sometimes it happens, right? I'm watching it at like a slightly sped up version of it uh, than what you would be watching on TV as well, but um, as well as trying to take notes and like make you know citations and things. So, yeah. uh, so the white packaging was your original packaging, and yes. your new packaging had the color in it. And I think that's mm -hmm. what, what that point when I ta was ta I talked about, you know, like it's not about what you necessarily think of it. It's like what's going to stand out against who you're putting it next to. You know, you don't want it to blend in or people to think that it's the same thing or maybe from the same brand, just like a slightly different, I don't know, flavor or, or uh, version of, of somebody else. Yeah, yeah very. Uh, thank you. There you go. Ding, ding. Variation yeah. on, on a product that already exists. Uh, so yeah, could you could you expand upon uh, what the you know were you were you surprised when um, they were like we actually like this <laughs> this uh, packaging better? Yeah, I was definitely surprised. So that's something that I couldn't have prepared for because it's like you present someone with something. Because the new packaging, we, we weren't on the market yet with it at the time we shot, um, we taped. And we were actually going through this rebranding process for a couple of months. And so we were really busy with that as well leading up to the show. And then the show um, taping became the hard deadline of when that needed to be completed so that we can actually present it. Because I knew that if we were to air a few months later, I don't want to air with our old packaging when now we're going to be on the market with our D2C and in store with a new packaging, there would have been a discrepancy there. So it was a really good, really good timing um, for us to have done that. And it was actually my idea to present the old packaging on the show. I'm like, hey, I think this might be a good um, contrast to show the sharks that this is what we've been working with on the market so far is this old packaging. And that's what I said on the show. I said, I want to share with you that everything we've done so far has been with this old look. And then, then that's when I showed the the white packaging. Um, so I, w I was a little bit surprised. I think you know they have a few minutes to kind of look at something and give their initial like like feedback and not really go into um, too much analysis about that. Particularly, they don't have the comps and they don't have um, you know the 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 uh, knowledge of like who's sitting next to us on the shelf and the whole thing. Um, and so their initial gut instinct was that oh this this original packaging is just very like clear and legible and. And actually, I believe that our new packaging is also very clear and legible. It's just a different type of thing. It's that's where branding comes in. And I'll defend it. I'll go down fighting defending this because the feedback has been great. We've invested months in this. I've interviewed customers. And so even though I was surprised by what they said, it didn't really phase me. I wasn't like insecure afterwards about, oh, no, we should have changed the packaging. I should have stayed with the old one. I respected their opinions as I've said that, you know, I've said on the show. Um, but I was pretty confident in the work we've done leading up to the rebrand. So brand strategy is really important. And post show, we kind of did a whole thing on Instagram of, and via our email list and whatnot. It's like, well, what do you guys think? You know, the sharks left the old packaging and everyone's like, almost everyone, I would say like 97% of customers were like, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they're like, we don't know what the sharks are talking about. The, your new packaging is amazing. That's what drew me in. That's what made me curious. The old, the old packaging looks a lot more generic and it served me at the time. I mean, obviously I worked with it for four years for a reason because it served us at the time. You know, first of all, it was a little bit more trendy to have that clean look and to communicate 
clean ingredients and that's what the intention was but ultimately what became important is communicating our brand story and our connection to dates and the origin story and where i come from and that's part of that's a big part of where we wanted to go with magic dates and so the new branding represents that yeah no i and i like i i could go either way on it personally i think that the, i think that the white packaging was was good and i think that the colors i I, when they said the word heavy, I like I get it, like because it's a it's because it was a full color. I mean, color is hard. I mean, you went through a branding process, right? Like having color to as a as like anything that's not just white and then lettering on top of it is very hard to get right and to make it not look, I don't know. Uh, amateurish you know it's it's mm -hmm. very because you have to every color has to be right i mean the uh for for our super entrepreneurs out there was it uh it's uh crap is the is the acronym i believe right it's contrast something uh something and position uh was it alignment and one of them is like closeness how close things are mm -hmm. but like the contrast of something is super takes a lot of effort like you i mean look at any website that uh I'm at it as we're talking about. Mm -hmm. oh yeah there you go right so yeah. so putting white text on there is is easy right but like the at the top those are different are those different the the blue has is that different colors i can't tell with the camera these they yeah like these are clean, only one is different only the pink because oh, that's okay. what that's our added no added sugar value and so we just made that one stick out a little bit but all these are cream. We did have them different colors, maybe on the show, because we did update a little bit since then. But then we wanted to go with a bit more of a cleaner look. It was getting a little busy. But speaking of contrast, I mean, literally every line you look at, there's a contrast. Like nothing yep. blends in at any point, and you see every single element, even at a distance, um, which is key. And then when they say heavy, I mean, this is our chocolate covered line, and then this is our non chocolate covered, the uncoated line. And so, there's no blue on this one. So you actually have a bit of both. We have pink as the main, you know, primary, primary color on this line. Um, and then there's a differentiator between the two lines, which is really important. So we kept all these different things in mind. And it's actually not true that there are any, that there are not any food products on the market that aren't darker in color. There's some really successful brands that have done really well. There's a popcorn brand. I forget what it's called now that has black mm -hmm. packaging. And so it becomes a strategy to use darker colors, you know, potentially, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it is subjective, but the only thing that matters at the end of the day is what the customers think. And if you're connecting to your story, I mean, those are the two things. What was your brand strategy with this? And are you achieving your brand objectives and your brand strategy objectives? And then what do the customers think? People that are actually buying the product, how are they responding to this? And are, the response has been incredible. And we've had customers who've been buying it, even with the old packaging. And then they'll like send us emails about not realizing our connection to dates and how much more depth it gave our story and our brand and how much more excited they are now to support our business. And that's, I mean, that's really what it's about for me at the end of the day. I think being in the food space, it's a really unique opportunity to speak outside of, you know, our, our core uh, product, food is so emotional. And so being able to talk about culture and, dif and different things, um, it's a unique opportunity to do that. A hundred, ding, ding on that, right? It is about like, the crazy part there is that your customers felt more connected because you changed the packaging. You didn't change right. the formula. You didn't change, like, uh, like you didn't change, right? The, right. the packaging right. changed right. and it literally made people feel more connected to it. Right. It shows you how powerful communication is. I mean, that's what it is. Cause I can stand here and not open my mouth and be dressed in all white and then just stare at you. And that's my packaging. That's who I am, right? I'm not changing, but I'm not communicating anything with you for you to understand where I'm coming from, what I'm creating for you, whatever that might be. But branding, I actually, after this process really understood how powerful branding was because that, you know, you, you hear that and you say that and you have to have a good product. So that's, first of all, I mean, you gotta have a good product. You can, you can't put like a pile of crap in amazing packaging and have it do well. You might sell the first, you know, you get the first sale, but you're not going to get the second sale. So it has to be a good product to begin with. But then if the packaging matches that product, then you have like a home run. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, by the way, in, in crap is the P is proximity. So it's okay. like contrast. I forget what the R is. Yeah, I forget what the R. Uh, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look it up as soon as uh, we get you on your next rant here, or well, not rant, talk, you know, talking points. So, yeah. um, no, I, I I couldn't agree more. Branding um, is is I mean, look, that's what people buy and spend insane amounts of money on things that are basic need items, right? From water to you know bags, handbags, book bags, uh, tech bags, like. The branding uh, really elevates everything and the messaging that goes behind it to get people excited about going going with it, right? And obviously, you still have to have a, a quality product, but it just enables, you know, a whole different level of, of what you can charge for something, uh, the value that people perceive to, to get from it. Um, because you could talk about tech specs all day, right? Like the technical specifications of the date or an iPad or whatever. But if they're not like feeling connected to uh, the branding of it, it's not going to, it, you know, it, it just, it'll, it'll have a, it'll have a market. It'll have a much smaller market that, you know, people that are like, oh yeah, like I like these specs. I like what this, you know, the, the guts of what this is. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't have enough, uh, um, to get to that next level of like a whole mm -hmm. another level of people that just like, yes, I, I, I get it and I'm willing to spend the money for it. Mm -hmm. And you want to make it as easy as possible for your customers. That's also the thing is like, yes, I can have a whole newspaper about all the amazing studies that come out about dates and the polyphenols and the antioxidants and all that good stuff. But that's not easy like it's not an easy way to consume a piece of information or to communicate values and so you just want to make it very easy for the customer to look and be curious and so it becomes an exercise in psychology and design and efficiency it becomes an exercise in all of this and that and, and it's really about a lot more than just again like design and elements and, and logos i mean i i know that you know that but it's like the tip of the iceberg what you're seeing ultimately with a brand is literally the tip of the iceberg which is, you know, the logo and the look and the colors and all the brand strategy work that goes under the surface is really where it's at. And then when a customer, when you're able to communicate all that stuff that's underneath the ocean to the customer in a very simplistic way, that's that's winning. It absolutely is. Uh, and crap, the R is repetition. So mm -hmm. uh, for, for our super entrepreneurs watching at home or wherever you're watching, uh, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. So I knew I was I was close with with most of those. Um, placement is what a, the proximity one, but uh, but yeah. So it's important. You know, th those are some of the basics. If you're trying to get your own like logo or packaging off the ground, you know, you you follow these uh, four key principles right there, and you're going to be much better off like out of the gate with your not paid somebody ten thousand dollars to like do it all you know do it from soup to nuts for you um so i'll play i'll play a bit of a devil's advocate with that one ahead. joe just because it may be i mean don't spend tens of thousands of dollars but it might be worth spending ten thousand oh, yeah. dollars to partner with you know with a branding company that really understands you that you feel good about so also don't cheap out either don't go to 99designs.com. Don't go to fiverr.com. They're not going to work on branding for you. They're going to create a logo for you. Don't do that. You need to they work might with steal somebody a logo who's going to work on the brand. For you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what like what is that? It's going to be something very generic. And, and also, as an entrepreneur, they'll be invested in the brand strategy part of it. Because I did work with a company, but I came with them, to them with my homework. Like, it was already completed. I'm like, here's the brand strategy. Here's what I know we need to do. Can you help me put this into you know, visuals now. So I think it's, it has to be a bit of a collaboration between you and a smaller agency or maybe like an independent branding person who can help you bring something to life that's meaningful. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, you know, I was giving the example for the person that's like, I don't have money to spend. I need to get this off the ground. And I have the time to figure out how to put together uh, maybe it's a logo or, or a flyer or a website or like literally anything. Those are the four key principles to like, 
if you can like keep that in mind all the time, even if you're working with somebody, you know, mm -hmm. you need to educate yourself so that you're not getting, totally. you know, fleeced on something that like, everyone's like, yeah, it looks great. It looks awesome because they all love you and they don't want to say anything negative. And it's like, well, I spent, you know, maybe five, maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, who know, mm -hmm. like whatever it is, you need to still know, right? Like as, um, you know, as I, I always like to say, like, you should know every aspect of your business, uh, even if you're not the master of every aspect of your business, you should know how long it yeah. takes to do certain, at, you know, certain things, uh, so that you're not getting fleeced in the process. Uh, and, and in this case, just talking about design, like just to have some basic idea, you know, you don't have to be a marketing master yeah. to, to understand crap. So <laughs> yeah, to totally. And that's, I hundred percent agree with that. Cause I taught myself like, some branding stuff very early on. Like there's so many great branding books out there. One of them is called The Brand Gap. That's amazing that you can really learn a lot from. You're not going to become a branding strategist yourself, you know, probably down the line, but you should know about it so that you could have at least an educated conversation and you know the, the value that you're getting from whatever company you hire. So I did the same thing with digital marketing. I, I realized I don't want to run the Facebook machine and the Amazon machine and the whole thing, but I wanted to know that when I'm communicating with my digital, you know, person, I want to understand what they're saying to me so that if something is or isn't working, I know why and I'm not frustrated and I'm not pointing fingers or blaming or just not really knowing how to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I think that that is a, a great way. You know, again, you don't have to be the man. You don't have to master every aspect of it. You just have to have a good enough understanding so that you, you can have input and have some, you know, uh, know that the people that are do that you're trusting to do it are doing at least you have some percentage of knowledge that they're doing the thing they're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah. Speaking of things that you're supposed to be doing, uh, let's talk about Lori and uh, the very surprising aspect. Yeah, you like how I tied that in there. Uh, the very good segue. I like that. Eh, thank you. I've been working. On, I've been working on it. Uh, the <laughs> very surprising uh, take that she had. Hot take. I would. I would say um, that she doesn't. I, to my knowledge, I, I've never heard her, her say that uh, to somebody, but maybe not, or at least not very often, um, to, you know, to leave behind what you're doing to, to go and do something else. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't there for career counseling. <laughs> That's for sure. I was there for a very specific <laughs> reason, is to get feedback on my business. I am not fresh out of college. I'm... Um, a mature woman who has made my choices and so i just really honestly had nothing that was that wasn't that edited um what they showed was just me saying i respect your feedback and that was it because i really didn't have too much to say in return it's it's, it's an opinion for whatever reason she felt compelled um to say that that's fine i know our sales were soft so maybe that's what it is but that would just mean that i would give up you know it's like sales were soft for a couple of years i'm working on things I think most businesses start off that way unless you're really well funded from the beginning or if it's like your second or third business. And so for me, there was just so much more ahead than what's already happened. And I've made a very conscious, mature choice of what career path I wanted to take when I decided not to go to law school. And for my reasons, I'm a very analytical person who, you know, mulls over my decisions and, um, makes informed decisions at the end of the day. And then I own those decisions. And I think that's what accountability is about. And so um, I'm going down this path, whether <laughs> she likes it or not. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was quite, I mean, obviously Mark was uh, kind of shocked by it as well. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, when I, you know, when I, when I heard her say it, I, not only you know was I shocked by it, but it, it to me, um, it it, it kind of diminishes what almost anybody is bringing to the tank, right? Like, yeah, okay, sales maybe not what they expect or or would like to see them at, um, but at the same time, like it. it they don't there isn't a threshold for businesses to get to shark tank like literally businesses have been founded like yeah well you know we we just like made the prototype yesterday 
<laughs> you know, yesterday. Right, like pre market, I mean, pre revenue. <laughs> Yeah, like, heck, I mean, the bacon, the U -U Umaro bacon that was just on this past week, right? Like, they're like, here's the first 500 strips of bacon that we ever produced. Uh, hopefully you don't turn green. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't have a, you don't get sick after you eat it. Like, it should be good, right? But, um, mm -hmm. so, so, so I, I, it's just very, very uh, interesting and, and good on you for, for recognizing right that you have more to say but understanding that you're not even if you took the time to say what you wanted to say right and maybe fill in the gaps it likely is not going to change her mind at that point i mean she made a clear decision to say something that she doesn't just throw around lightly i mean this if you know if kevin said it it's one thing right like ah you know he said it maybe a hundred times in, in all, in all of Shark Tank history. <laughs> um, but for her to say it is, is di it's different. Um, I know, look, when I get negative feedback in my comments, I always, my, I have a standard response. I appreciate you watching and commenting and that's it. Cause like nothing I say is going to change how they feel. Right. It's not, exactly. it's just not going to change anything. So, um, yeah. no matter how like, mad or like wow i can't believe they said that i appreciate you taking the time because you know what at the end of the day you're just helping me anyway and i th i think even getting feedback that we don't want to hear as entrepreneurs is helpful right because if nothing else it's an opportunity for us to exercise our ability to receive negative feedback and, and negative is a very subjective term obviously right it's all or right. you know it's all in the eye of the beholder at that point but but for really it, it's it's negative feedback in the terms of like i should just go home and and, and pack it in right um yeah in, in in that case uh or at least pack this in not necessarily you know my ability to want to go and create a business a business of some sort so uh no i i you know i applaud you taking you know taking your uh, grace and and saying you know I you know I appreciate the feedback that's not really why I'm here <laughs> yeah I mean some things are worth defending other things are just not you know we're sitting here and there was a point where I went back and forth with Mark a little bit about the value proposition and and that's something that I thought I can clarify and you know at the end of the day for him it just wasn't this like um, quick unique value proposition where he would just look on the shelf and realize that that's what it is whether it's like keto or you know, a tablespoon of this only has as much calories in it or whatever it might be. So I went back and forth with him a little bit about that. Um, there was a give and take there. But for me, Lori's comment shut down the conversation. There was nothing else to do because I don't like to or need to defend myself. This wasn't, it's one thing to defend my business and choices I've made in my business. This is just more about choices I've made overall in my life. And mind you, that was just a snippet of what was edited out because there were other things that were said aside from career um, that were also unsolicited advice I was that I was also not there for and I'll just keep that you know confidential um, so that's why I chose at that moment to just not you know engage in in that commentary and conversation because I could just tell it wasn't gonna go anywhere like what am I gonna say back that's going to I, I don't even want to change her mind because I'm there to partner with somebody who believes in what I'm doing and so for me, Mr. Wonderful, seeing that he, he was very observant and understood what I was trying to create here. It was about the product, but it was also about a lot more than the product. Um, and so at the end of the day, you can't explain that away to somebody. You can't explain away this feeling you get about somebody. And it was just obviously not happening. It's like you're dating. You go on a date and someone tells you they don't like you. <laughs> you're not going to start and convince them to like you. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all good. Well, I mean, if you're in like, you know, middle school or something, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, that's where you're going to exactly. learn the lesson. <laughs> that's the training ground. Yeah, for but I'm not, tw we're not 12. This is, <laughs> right. this is a very respectable show. We're, you know, we're adults. So we're not in medical school, middle school, high school, college, or any of the, <laughs> you know, um, degrees of, uh, of, of schooling. Um, and yeah, and that was it. There was really was not much to say there. It was surprising, you know, for sure, because I was just expecting feedback on the actual business and potentially something constructive that can help me move things forward. Um, but it wasn't constructive. I think maybe that's a better uh, 
term than negative, right? It wasn't, it wasn't that it was negative. It just didn't feel constructive because I've already, again, made my career choices for very specific reasons, not just because I wanted to pursue this, it is, but I've also, I, I had certain objectives and like visions for like what I want to do with my life and what value I wanted to create in the world. And I realized that going to law school was actually not going to do that. Um, and here I am. Ding, ding. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So, so Kevin jumps in, uh, can you talk, you know, talk us through your thought process of like, why a 33rd and the uh, 33rd, 33rd, 33 and a third was not going to, to get you there. Was why I was resistant to that. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you always go into the, I think you go into the tank with sort of like a maximum threshold of what you're willing to give up. But at the same time, I think it's important to be flexible and really wait. And that's like all of life, right? It's like the cost benefit of any opportunity that comes your way. And so to me, ultimately, the opportunity to work with Kevin was a great one. And so my threshold increased <laughs> in real time when I was in the tank. It was just, you know, when you hear like a third, and I, and I definitely choked on that a little bit in the tank, um, just thinking about giving up a third of my business, when I felt like I was just turning a leaf and creating um, a sort of, we had a new strategy going into 2022. You know, with the, with the rebrand and we were focusing more on D2C, everything I'd done so far has been brick and mortar. So I felt like there was a lot that I can still do on my own and keep, you know, keep the ownership. But again, cost benefit of everything, I felt like Kevin can get us a lot further, a lot quicker. Um, and I wanted to be in his world. I wanted, I wanted to partner with him and I love that he understood where I was coming from. We have similar backgrounds. Um, dates are part of his diet. They've been magic dates have been part of his life <laughs> since we've met, which is which is awesome. <laughs> uh, so that's that's very validating. So for me, it's like the contrast of Lori's comment was getting a deal from Mr. Wonderful, which just kind of blows everything else out of the water. <laughs> well, I, you're right, uh, but but that I mean, obviously, uh, oh. Uh, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's awesome that you were able to, to meet that, uh, meet that demand of like, you know, yes, I'm, I'm willing to go that high up. And I, and, uh, you know, I, I always say like, when we're looking at, you know, businesses, uh, and we're looking at, you know, valuations and whether or not it's worth getting, uh, into a, a business deal with somebody at a higher percentage, then we would probably want to give up, assuming that we're not already like giving out a, a large chunk of the business to begin with, right? Because like you don't want to get to a point where you don't necessarily own it and it hasn't made it yet to a point where it's like, oh, you know, if I own, you know, 6% of this, like it's worth, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple millions. Um, so I, you know, I, I think that being able to 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 see like, okay, well, we're we're talking about dates here, right? Like, you could easily get dates yourself. Like, you do a business, it fails. As long as you still have access to go and get dates, it's not like you're. I mean, obviously, you have to redo branding and and like come at it from a different angle and all that. But to me, like, if unless you're inventing like something of the equivalent of like a car or an iPad or something where there's like a ton of IPs and things in there that like it would take you say another five years to like re-engineer or 10 years to re-engineer around your own patents and your own that kind of stuff um you know it it, it can be worth saying okay yeah i mean it's it's worth giving up uh a higher percentage again assuming that you don't are you haven't already distributed a large percentage of the business uh, yeah, and we've been people. self-funded so far so so that was an easier decision to make because i had 100 percent ownership um, so from that perspective, we're still fresh in that way. No, and that's great. I mean, that now and, and you're you're fresh in that way, and you got Kevin in your corner. Like that's awesome, you know. Yeah. What uh yeah. that that just opens up so many opportunities in the future for for both Kevin and for you, uh, for him, you know, for him to not necessarily have to take an exit at some point to be able to make money. And I mean, it was one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yes, that's a lot of money, but it. I mean, you didn't go in there asking for five hundred thousand dollars or even two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's you know a reasonable amount to get a, a sizable chunk and and you know inc and and increase his date input. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, there's there's obviously some risk on his end. He doesn't know. I think he just be, maybe trusted in he let he liked the product, probably saw that it's something that I can carry through with like a little bit more guidance and, you know, a little bit more exposure. Um, so I appreciate whatever it is, because we actually met after the show, um, which was awesome that he made the time to do that. So I got to talk a little bit more detail about what it was that he saw the value of, of you know, me and Magic Face being. Um, and so yeah, there's a, you know, there's a risk assessment, I think, on both sides. I mean, even for him, yes, for Kevin O'Leary, $150,000 in the big picture of things and his investments may not be a big deal. But like he says, he doesn't make investments to fail. That's not what he does. I mean, you see sometimes on the show that there's um, some emotionality in some of the deals that get made. Kevin rarely does that. So, so that's also something that's very cool is that it, it does tend to be a very smart business decision, not an emotional decision. And that's also, you know, another layer of like validation for our business. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, he, he very rarely, uh, ever lets, lets emotion get in. And it seems like almost any time that he does allow emotion get to get in, uh, I don't think he usually ends up getting the deal, the deal, uh, you know, it, it, for one reason or another, but, uh, but Hey, you know, it, it, anything could work out any, you know, in any way. And that's awesome that you got to meet up with them after the fact. So, uh, so after, after Shark Tank, you're walking, you know, you're walking out, you got the deal. Uh, you're, I, uh, hopefully you're feeling pretty good. Are you feeling drained at all? Like how, cause a lot of people have described that as a, as a draining experience. Obviously you go and see a, uh, a psychiatrist or psychologist after the fact to, you know, yeah, walk yeah. you through everything that happened and help you process. But like, how, yeah. how did you feel after after you walked out? Yeah, I mean, I had my own psychologist too, so I needed a session for sure about a week <laughs> later. And it's not because of anything immediate, <laughs> not because of anything immediate happening per se, but just it's a lot of pressure and criticism and just stuff coming at you, and it and it can feel personal. I mean, of course, it feels personal, and so you just want to make sure that like mentally <laughs> you're still like there and 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 you know keeping it together. Um, but afterwards, it wasn't draining from like a physical energy standpoint. I actually felt delirious. It was like, it was the weirdest thing. I had no more concept of time. Like, I didn't know what time it was. I don't know what day it was. That was the first thing I asked when I walked out. I'm like, what? I'm like, today's Friday, right? I'm like, what time is it? Like, it was just such a time warp. It was very strange. And so because you give everything you have, and they tell you that beforehand, if you walk out feeling energized and ready to go and ready to do that again, then you did not do your best. <laughs> so you just have to know that. So I went in there, gave it absolutely everything. All I wanted to do was eat a nap afterwards, um, which is what I did. You know, I just packed my stuff, went home. Luckily, I was close. I think that was a really lucky thing that I was close to home, so I had to get that comfort. Um, but it's just an absolute mental, spiritual drain. Yeah, yeah, I, I I bet. So you get back. Uh, well, you <laughs> you drove home. Uh, I drove home. <laughs> uh, when, you know, <laughs> it's time to get back to business. Like, how, what what was some of the first steps you took once you got back home and and started to be like, all right, well, we still gotta, you know, just because we make a deal on TV doesn't mean you know, or on TV at that point, uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily get a deal or you know, the deal is actually going to follow through. So what, what was some of the first steps you, you decided to, you know, to take once you got back? Well, I was still focusing on my business, obviously, at that point. Like I had, as I mentioned, made changes um, that were pretty drastic changes for the business. And so focusing on like the market, market strategy, as I would mentioned before, I was much more brick and mortar uh, the years prior. Uh, we had actually launched nationwide at Cost Plus World Market uh, two years prior in 2020. But... They closed six weeks after we launched because of COVID and because they're an alternative retailer, they're not a traditional grocer, they actually shut down for months. And so we didn't get the reorders. So there was a lot happening on the retail side for us, a lot of opportunities that ended up not transpiring and like materializing. And so for me coming into 2020, even before um, COVID, I knew that we had to have a more robust D2C strategy. And so that's a lot of the work that I was doing in 2020. And so by the time I got to like last year, those are some of the things I was putting into motion and just really investing more resources into that. And then the branding was, was a part of it as well, um, the rebrand. And so I just got back to work to make sure that our uh, website was ready to go, both 
when you're D2C, you have to make sure that your website can handle all that, that user experience looks good, everything looks good, all the information they need to answer for your customers. Make sure that the packaging was, you just kind of keep going in there and iterating, iterating and um, focusing on Amazon, you know, more, more than we were before. And then starting to really get strategic with retail partners. Like how do we actually want to go to brick and mortar now instead of having a nationwide getting a little bit more focused on that. Awesome. Awesome. And how did things go once, uh, you know, once it aired at like, did, did you run any problems, website problems, ordering problems, uh, shipment problems, any, any, you know, how did everything fare after that? Yeah. So, I mean, luckily none of those that you've that you mentioned, none of yeah. those problems, we, we made sure, yeah, <laughs> yay. we made sure we averted those as much as possible. We just, we had like all hands on deck, just making sure the website on the back end was loading that Shopify can handle the volumes. We were ready from a uh, inventory standpoint, so that's not you know an issue. But like this heat wave is an issue, so it's not something I can obviously plan for. So we did have to delay some shipments um, because we do do some cold packing. But on some of these smaller orders, it just would have been too much. So we decided to just wait until next week. Um, but most orders, like ninety something percent, went out the door on time. Um, I made some errors on my end, just from like a shipping perspective, nothing detrimental, but just, you know, kinks with the system and whatnot. So I had to do some customer service work afterwards more so than I expected. That was just sort of a learning curve for me personally. And I mean, we're still in it now, you know, we're still getting the orders, which is awesome, getting really awesome feedback, uh, which is great of just people like loving, loving the snack and, and subscribing and just getting it on a monthly basis. And yeah, we're in the wake of it. Well, that that is that is that is great uh, to hear that you didn't have any massive, you know, catastrophic failures or, or you know, the the wheels come off or anything like that. Um, you know, looking at uh, I, I had a little, while you were speaking earlier, I had some time to look up the uh, the original packaging, and honestly, I, I yeah, I don't I don't see what they saw uh, mm -hmm. in it. I don't. I, I really uh, don't think it's as good as your current packaging. Uh, now that I'm actually like getting to, to look at, I can pull it up here for for our people watching uh, at home. But yeah, it, it does. Um, it does. It just looks kind of like it's there. You know. Yeah. Exactly. It's there. It's yeah, very I mean, prosaic. It's, it's not like, bad. Like, it yeah. does like it is clear like it's clear but at the same time it doesn't it doesn't provide you know what it reminds me of especially with the gr that green it reminds me of the pistachio uh like the green the pistachio green uh um, wonderful I don't know what they're called is that what they're called um wonderful uh the, the the one that they run all the commercials for it's like the only pistachio wonderful. company wonderful. Is that what it's yeah it's, it's a wonderful company yeah they do pistachios and pomegranate and they have them in black bags with the green uh border or something yeah, yeah 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 so i mean like that that kind of reminds me of that but just you know so like like you said it, it it's good but it, it's just it, it's not it's not as when you call something magic right i feel like something should stand out and be magical you know sure. and and that um your current packaging definitely brings that more to mind, more to the front uh, of mind than than the yeah. original than the original packaging. Yeah, but, I agree. Uh, I know, like you said, it's just there. I mean, we didn't even have a color palette at the time. The colors on there are just the indicators of the flavor, and so even when we we're trying to, you know, build up our content with social media and with email marketing, there just wasn't that much to work with. And we did actually work with a company at the time that you know that did this for us. So this is. Also an example of both, you know, I wouldn't say it's a failure because we were on the market with this and we sold hundreds of thousands worth of product, you know, with that old packaging and it's good and it communicates and it tells you everything you need to know. Um, but again, you level up, you learn, you grow, you evolve. And where we're at right now with the packaging is just that next level of communication. Yeah. Like if you, if you were to ask me, uh, Hey Joe, what, what are my colors? Like what are the magic date colors? Like for the logo. Well, I mean, there's not there. There's like literally nothing except the top colors that aren't exactly. consistent between any it like at all uh, to mm -hmm. it. So you know, I yeah, I mean, it's good. It's there. It did it did its job. It's it served its purpose. Yeah. And that's 
that's I mean a lot of times that's all we can ask for, right? Is is getting something that gets us to that next step so we can yeah. say afford to go and spend, you know, the, the whatever money it's going to cost. If it's you know, five thousand you know, a thousand, five thousand, mm-hmm. ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars on branding to get us that next step. And yeah. uh yeah. And that's and that's it. That's all I can yeah. I think it and release it. And this is just also a lesson in like not getting stuck on trying to make things perfect. And that's a lesson for me as well, actually, where it's like, just get it done the best way you can possible, whatever it might be, whether it's branding or well, what's that? There's actually an acronym for that too. It's like, like the lowest value, viable, um, Oh, the MVP, product. the minimal, yeah, the MVP. minimal viable product. Minimal yeah. viable product. And so just get, get that on, on all fronts. Yeah, minimal. I mean, minimal I always, well, minimal, product. minimal. I, I always get it confused. It's one of the two, but I always get it confused yeah. on which one it is. Sorry. The concept is the same, right? It's just get it out the door, start working with it, get that feedback and keep moving. Um, a lot of people start their businesses with, with handmade labels that they're just sticking on bags nope. just to, you know, get going. I mean, I still buy products from the store. My favorite bread from Erewhon, you know, I don't necessarily recommend anybody <laughs> shops for everything at everyone, but there are some really awesome specialty items there. And some of my favorite things are still hand labeled there because it's a local business and, you know, small batch and whatnot, and doesn't take away from the quality of the product. But once they decide to do a packaging rehaul, it's going to look, you know, incredible, um, you know, at that point. But I, some of us like early adopters, like as a customer, it doesn't take away from like what I'm seeing in the, you know, value of a, of a product being. So yeah, just don't get stuck, just get it done and then make it better. Yeah, no, a hundred, hundred percent. I, the, the one that recall, uh, comes to mind is the, uh, totes babies, uh, Lindsay, uh, being on the show, you know, she t- showed her packaging and, um, she modeled for the packaging. Like she, you know, she didn't wait to like, Oh, well, you know, we got to wait till we can get like a professional, this model or this, that, or a third, like she just went went for it and did it and yeah. got it out yeah. there and, and was able to make it happen. So uh, I think that, you know, you work with what you have and you, you know, the people that get it are going to get it, you know, are really going to, as long as you do a good job making it clear and understandable, uh, they're, they're going to get it and they're going to, you know, run with it. And then you'll be able to bring more people on once you can get to that and, you know, decide that you're like, okay, we're ready to bring on more customers. We're ready to bring on, you know, maybe a national um, retail or something that affects. So we got to make sure that we're at that that level and, and where we what got us here is not going to get us there, as the classic line says. Diana, thank you so much for being here with us today. It was an absolute pleasure having you. Uh, tell everyone how they can get some magic dates in their life. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're on the website, Magic Date Spites, two S's, and we ship throughout the country. Um, free shipping, over $20. And so you can just have a little sampler pack and if you're in california southern california we're at all the whole foods as well and thank you for having me it was really cool to see your analysis of the episode just a couple of weeks ago and then reaching out to you and then you know you welcoming me on your show so it's been great um chatting and getting a little bit more in depth about all everything that you saw there <laughs> oh thank you I, I i greatly appreciate you reaching out just as i i appreciate all uh the shark tank entrepreneurs reaching out and having, you know, and having a good time with it. You know, it's never, never my intention for anybody to take it the wrong way or, or anything to that effect. Uh, it, you know, I try to be as, uh, you know, constructive as possible and, and insightful as possible. And then it doesn't always come out that way, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just human and I'm doing my, I'm doing my best. You oh, know? you did great. I appreciated your, I told you, I watched it with my husband and he's like, yeah, he's actually right. His analysis is really good. So we both really appreciated your, you know, depth of thought um, so quickly on the spot after watching the episode. <laughs> you know, the, and that's the key thing. You know, a lot of people throw throw barbs around, and not barb as in you know Barbara, uh, but <laughs> they will throw. You know, they'll they'll throw all these these comments out, and like I don't think a lot of them. Don't, I don't think realize like this is like on the spot live i don't pre-watch it and on the newest episodes i literally don't like i i'm recording it on my computer and intentionally not watching or listening um to the point where like i'm literally covering the screen with a window over the recording Mm -hmm. just so that i you know can see like the bottom corner to see like when it goes commercial break and stuff but Mm -hmm. um 
but yeah, like it's all like shot in real time. There's usually almost no editing. It, though lately I've been doing some edits just because um, the copyright bot gets in the way. So I used to like blur out, like if you go to some of the older videos, I would like blur out the video. Um, and then I got a lot, I get a lot of complaints about that. And it's like, well, either it's not there or whatever, but yeah. So it, it, it is all shot in real time. So it might be a little bit edited, but for the most part, yeah. it's, I'm not pausing the video and like going to do a whole bunch of research or something. It's, it's all in real time. So I got the pen <laughs> in my, no in cool. my notebook. <laughs> Very cool. I love it. You were cut off for this. <laughs> oh, thank you. I've been, uh, I've been around business all my life, like since I was about six years old, you know, sweeping floors, wow. putting inventory uh, on the shelves, counting inventory, all that stuff, uh, working in my family business. So like I, I, I've learned at the, you know, at the, at the feet of giants, uh, and, and stand on their shoulders, uh, going forward. So sweet. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm like, I'm like running away from the sun right now, as you can see, it's starting to dip over here in my, <laughs> in, in my space. So I'm like, so perfect timing. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Anyway, yeah. It's, yeah. it's perfect timing for you to go and watch one of these two uh, over here, or one of these two videos over here. I will see you over there. Take care and go be super.